Hello dear friends, so today we must speak about what can be in marketing after coronavirus is entirely defeated and what kind of changes marketing can suffer from the environment and from internal factors. What is very essential for our time so my conversation with you will be accompanied by sherry who is one of most interesting dogs of our time so we are involved in marketing marketing is our life so we can say that old marketing is gone and Corona virus will change entire marketing activities. Many different things will come to the field of marketing and especially we can predict the future through very smart type of segmentation what is jobs to be done segmentation. So right now I will give you steps what must be used by marketers. First of all, marketers must determine what changes occurred in key jobs to be done during coronavirus, during this kind of disastrous development of our time. The second thing is we should try to draw the map of customer journey how customers journey what customers do how they travel so if we predict if if we establish the map of customers journey we will understand how to send them needed information how to target the integrated marketing communication towards customers and so the consideration of new approaches are very essential and consideration of new art of inspiration is very relevant for the future so right now let's start to speak about marketing what is most relevant thing of our time and Sherry decided to go it's better because Sherry has a lot of interesting things to do but we must together think about what to do in future how to plan services and how to describe the motives of our customers and how to get this kind of type of knowledge to our industry, to the industry of thoughts, to the industry of marketing thinking. So first of all, in consumer-oriented approaches, not a lot of things can be changed. Customers must be inspired by culture they belong, and not only culture, but also subculture so there are some countries having biggest subcultures for example United States United States we know that this country has a lot of big and interesting clusters what are entitled as subcultures and first of all we can say that one of interesting clusters this is Hispanic subculture what has unusual biggest purchasing power Hispanic sub subculture they purchase more than 950 billion goods and services and after them it is very interesting subculture one of the most brave and nice people 
what is Afro-American subculture having 920 billion US dollar power to buy services and products. And after that, we have the third great subculture in the United States, what is Asian Americans and what kind of subculture it is. So this is 500 billion and more US dollar subculture. So they have this great power to buy services and products created by different kind of companies and world companies. But right now in the United States we see that ethnocentric points of view became more popular and this country can not surely move to ethnocentric ideas, but step by step, step by step, together with multicultural understanding of our environment, the ethnocentrism will play its great role also in the United States, but also in other countries. So let us see subcultures in any countries and let us decide what to do to these subcultures. What kind of type of products and services to offer them and how to be interesting for these subcultures. So right now when we speak about subcultures we can use example of Walmart. Walmart is one of the most interesting marketer of goods and services and the Walmart several years ago established special stores for Hispanic subcultures. In those stores you see Hispanic writing, all kind of things they are done according shapes, designs, motifs, sounds, colors, what Hispanic subculture is mostly preferring from any kind of alternatives. So Walmart is doing the right things. We can advise to any company, to any firm to follow the way of Walmart and try to offer some new things, some services to subcultures. But try to understand their language. Language is one of the greatest bridge to make people to be loyal, to make them to be more attentive to the product, services, policy, ideas, orientation of companies. All these kind of things must be done in the language of subculture, but not only language. We can take into consideration their history, their some interesting ideas, how they behave, their psychological and behavioral basics. All these things we should search through different kind of marketing approaches and one of new approaches what's coming step by step to any kind of company and companies are flocking towards this new model is narrow marketing. So narrow marketing totally can be great thing to understand subcultures and their heroes and do products and services for various groups of different subcultures. I want also to remain you uh, how and what with, with what uh, other companies also used the approach what is entitled as a subculture orientation by McDonald's and other fast food companies. We know that several years ago McDonald's also established special web page to make Asian Americans having 500 and more billion dollars to pay for 
fast food and to pay for any other products and services. So McDonald's was so professional that it offered to Asian Americans to understand more about things, about food, about fast food prepared in McDonald's chain. So Asian Americans, they must understand a little deeply what kind of ingredients are used, how they are used, and what kind of basics are used in different kind of food prepared and offered by this great fast food having a long history and very unique traditions. So my inspiration for Asian customers can be something great what I can do for them and offer them as a unique sales proposition. All times please think about USP, what is unique sales proposition. Think subcultural and think according this great guide, what is unique sales proposition. So right now when we plan some kind of type of services, we should follow the way of social factors. What kind of social factors can influence final customers strongly? So first of all, this is opinion leaders who are in any kind of society, family, social roles, people playing in different situations, and some kind of interesting researches, interesting studies, interesting statistics, what is also influencing people when they understand that others they behave differently. So there are very interesting type of networks where people are involved and through representation of their ideas we can understand towards what they are moving. So life cycle is also one of the interesting things, how people behave during purchase. And we should try to predict in which life cycle stage what people want and what people will desire according subcultural oriented approaches and according approaches what are also implemented as a something what is social factor orientation and what tries to attract all kind of social groups through special factors what we know really well. So first of all it's essential to know occupation of people, economic motives of people and economic power of people lifestyle of people and also some kind of personality patterns, self-concept and opinions about lifestyle of people in, to understand well the lifestyle of different persons in clusters, in social groups, in different kind of multicultural societies, especially in subcultures. We should try to use this kind of type of approach, what is entitled as a AIO approach. This approach says that, first of all, we should be very attentive to activities. This is A. We should be also very attentive to interests and interest groups. We should be also deeply involved to understand opinions. So, first of all, activities, interests and opinions. This is a I O approach. And through this approach we can better understand these great people. And personality 
uh, when we speak about personality, we say that this is black box approach. Our dream and dream of marketers is to turn this black box into transparent box. We want to see all these kind of black box customers to be more transparent, to see their spirit, to see their ideas. And this is possible after great marketing research activities. But marketing, marketing research is also sometimes they have very wrong final steps when analyzing of results is not right or hypothesis was wrong in the beginning stage and that's why all this cycle became waste of time and became waste of money. So when we try to understand person, we should go to the path of traits and we must think about self-confidence of person. So this first trait of person to be understood, we should go and deeply understand self-confidence of person. So this is one, this is the most essential thing to understand self-confidence of our customer. And after that, it comes dominance. So what kind of type of dominant position this customer has in its society or desires more dominance in society. So through this dominance, we can understand more because this is some kind of type of thinking, what drives this person, what drives this customer. Also, we should understand well social life and socialization of this customer. Autonomy, also it's one of the very interesting thing. How this customer is oriented to self-defense, how this customer is oriented to adaptation, how adaptability is linked to psychology of this customer so the according adaptability different societies can behave themselves differently like people and so aggression different societies they are aggressive also differently if we understand personality well we can think also about branding. We understand that there are two big things in marketing. My right hand, this is personality and its traits. Right now I try to retail these traits. My left hand, this is brand personality. The idea of brand personality was established by Kevin Lane Keller. And he wrote great book, unique book, wonderful book, what is strategic brand management. When we speak about strategic brand management, all times we are concerned to the idea, to the concept of personality of the brands. What is this? What kind of thing? Mr. Keller wanted to tell us about this brand personality. So Mr. Keller wanted to make all brands to have the same faces as we have. Mr. Mr. Keller also played the role of the God. He wanted to put the spirit into brands. And so his approach was very biblical approach. He made great thing. So he says that brand personality has five main traits. The first trait is sincerity of the brands. So sincerity also is divided by some kind of motives. 
when we speak about sincerity of the brain, we speak about how it's down to earth, how it's honest, how it's wholesome, how it's cheerful. All these things, they build sincerity of the brain. But sincerity is only one from five great traits of personal branding. So the second one, this is competence. When we speak about competence of the brands, we say something about how reliable they are, how intelligent they are, how successful they are, and how durable they are. All these things together, they build competence of the brands. The third trait of the brand, this is sophistication. Sophistication means that how professional brands are to do some of the roles in market. So sophistication is wonderful thing and after sophistication it comes ruggedness of the brands. So ruggedness of the brands, this is wonderful and many brands they are very oriented to this kind of type of traits. And the last one, this is this is the value of the brand. The value of the brand, this is some kind of equity of the brand. This is how they exchange their value with us, how we understand them and how they understand us, how they speak with us, what kind of type of communications they use to make us more attentive to them. For example, different brands, they have different traits. Wikipedia has competence. Jeep has ruggedness. Apple has excitement. So you can say many, many different names of the brands and you can find different traits of them. So these different traits, they play unique role in the history of humanity, in the history of our time. So that means that if we develop the brand, we should try to gather some of these five traits, what we mentioned right now. So, psychology of the person is oriented towards brands. Psychology of the person can be under understood by different concepts. One of them, this is Carl Gustav Jung, and the concept of Carl Gustav Jung, the archetypes, is wonderful. Through archetypes, we can understand people, and brands can have the same archetypes, and we can understand why people love or appreciate one brands and don't love and don't uh, like others. When we speak about psychology factors of the person, all times we speak about motivation, perception, learning, beliefs, and attitudes. So motivation, perception, learning, beliefs, and attitudes. Let's start from motivation. What drives people? to do something, to buy something, to purchase something, to choose something. So motivation is oriented towards Maslow pyramid. When we think about motivation, immediately we should use the approach of wonderful, great psychologist of our time, whose name is Abraham Harald Maslow. If we understand the pyramid of Maslow well, we can predict what kind of 
things must be done by our customer at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day or in the middle of the day so jobs to be done segmentation what I told you when I started my lesson is important to be analyzed through motivation and motivational things can be understood through Maslow pyramid pyramid of Abraham Harald Maslow so beside Maslow pyramid we have Freud Freud was also involved to understand person's motivation and he was saying that unsatisfied uh, needs they drive person to satisfy those needs through different kind of activities especially Eros was involved in these activities so when Freud was trying to explain the motivation of people he was trying to think about subconscious of different different audiences different persons different heroes so that means that perception right now it's interesting how perce perception of the person is working so perception is something what selects what organizes, and what interprets all kind of type of information and directs them to another person to achieve 100 percent of persuasion so we try to use facts we try to organize some information to use this for perception and others also do the same things against us to try to perceive us to follow their way so that means that perception is also one of factors how people behave themselves after motivation best is perception but after perception comes learning perception without learning is nothing as motivation without perception is nothing so motivation is first after motivation comes perception after perception comes learning but learning is based on beliefs and finally all these things they end by attitude so that means that the factors of psychology what makes them uh, psychological things to be developed are the following first of all motivation perception learning beliefs and attitudes so all these things together they do they do great great approaches they do something great ways towards towards some ideas some uh, interesting uh, products what makes people to be opponents of some ideas and proponents of other ideas products services companies brands and so on when we speak about buying behavior all times we should go to the matrix what divides buying behavior into four main motives so this is complex buying behavior uh, this is also dissonance reducing buying behavior what is also variety seeking buying behavior and habitual buying behavior so all these kind of type of buying behaviors they play some of role and we should understand which buying behavior is mostly directed to the products 
and to the situation when purchaser is trying to decide what to do, what product to buy, and how to behave, what kind of company to choose, and to be in this kind of line or to move to another line. All these things, they can be done through understanding of four different buying behaviors of final customer. So, when we try to understand who are customers as a big mass of people, we should go to the diffusion model of the Rogers. Rogers, genius marketer, he established the model of diffusion what divides all customers into five different subgroups. The first group of all customers, this is innovator. They are innovators. They are 2,5% of all customers of the product. But they are first guys, they are first comers. They are pioneers. They all times make the first step to taste the product, to taste the service. So they do the first step towards the product. So the number of them, this is 2,5%, not more. If they like the product, after them, already early adopters, they are flocking towards product. So early adopters, they behave themselves according the advices and suggestions of innovators. What is their number? Their number is like 13,5% uh, of all buyers. If early adopters already, already flocked and they were involved and they bought this product, after them, early majority is starting to buy the product or service. So, what is their percentage? Their percentage is like 34%. So, early <coughs> majority, all times, is in the third place to buy the product or service. But after them comes the late majority, what is also according Rogers Diffusion Theory, 34% from all customers and the final people, the final cluster of buyers, this is laggards. Sometimes it's also called conservators. So this is people of conservator society they come in final way. They come at the end. When, when they see that everybody has this kind of type of new self pawns after them, they go to the same way. Then they follow all kind of uh, buyers and they repeat the adoption of others. So that means that they also buy and the, the percentage of laggard, this is 16%. So right now, what companies do? Companies, firstly, when they make something new, they should think about where innovators can be met. How to penetrate innovators. How to make innovators to be attentive to the product. It's not only physical distribution. This is information what is more important how to make them to get this information how make them to be more attentive to information how make them to looking for additional information and how make them to come to follow to come to the companies to come to the hypermarkets or markets or, or the shelves, but after coronavirus, everybody will do this online. How 
make them to be attracted to online platforms and buy online, try online, do online. All processes must be done through online. So this is the rule of coronavirus marketing. And uh, when we understand the stages of adoption, the stages are very essential and stages are entitled as an A, I, E, T and A. So 20 years ago, stages of ad adoption were very simple. So they were awareness, information, desire, adoption. And we marketers were calling these stages of adoption as an AIDA or AIDA adoption. So awareness, information, desire, adoption. According to the great opera AIDA, we were calling them AIDA. It was very popular, it was very easy. We were uh, telling to all marketers that they must be attentive to this kind of type of adoption chain. Awareness, information, desire, adoption. After some period, this, this was replaced by more professional stages of adoption and we were calling them AIPTA, AIPTA. Uh, uh, logical flow. This was like awareness, information, preferences, trial and adoption. So this was something not logical. Preferences were uh, more closure to the beginning stages than trial. And we understand that trial must be previously and after that preferences. But but yeah, so it was proved by some marketing experiments. But right now we have this kind of awareness, information, evaluation, trial and adoption. So we have right now this A, I, E, T, A logical flow of adoption. So how it, it, it's going? It, it's going in this way, awareness about some products and services. We should put awareness into mind of prospect customer. If you think that this guy is your prospect customer, that person is your prospect customer, this prospect customer at the end of business day must already have awareness about your activities, awareness about your company, awareness about your services. If this awareness is working well as a nanotechnological logical flow, it looks like nanotechnologies. Like nanotechnologies, they continue to move in, even in the body and they try to uh, push some kind of uh, sensors and send signals and so on like the same is happening with awareness awareness is trying to make you to be more attentive to to have interest to elaborate some interest towards products and towards services if interests are elaborated well after that you think about evaluation you evaluate you evaluate try to value this process and go to try and you are in the trial you with this product are uh, you in, with this product are involved in the trial so after trial you have two options to buy or not to buy to own or not to own and finally this is adoption so this is one of the greatest new way to understand how customers behave and right now in the period of coronavirus awareness 
is digital. All things, they go digital. So you have time to become star of digital marketing. You should try to make your customers to think about you using digital marketing approaches. Interest must be checked by digital services and digital technologies. Evaluation must be done by customers themselves, but you should obtain this information through social sites, through online sites, through digital also uh, marketing services to digital marketing uh, chains. Trial can be done offline if this offline product and adoption can be, can be done online and sending them the product we can make people happier right now. So this coronavirus marketing can do a lot of great things and finally I want to tell you the words once was said by Napoleon Hill every adversity learns with the seed of an equivalent opportunity. So that means that every adversity is full of some seed of equivalent opportunity. We have adversity situation around the world, but this is also filled by equivalent seeds of opportunity. So that means that we should catch this opportunity and do something great. So thank you very much. I'm Professor Kahber Jakeli and this was Corona Period Marketing. Bye bye. Thank you.